Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another week of Crypto Journey. This week, we, Stephen McCaskill, the CEO of Dasset, will be giving us an update on what's coming up with Dasset. Over to you, Stephen. Thanks so much, Julia, and thank you everyone for attending. I'm really excited to talk about what's uh, happening in Dasset currently and, and what uh, you can expect over the next uh, year, because we're working on a lot of exciting things. And the uh, this is an, a different presentation than we normally give because we're normally talking about crypto projects or concepts that relate to the broader crypto ecosystem, where this presentation will be solely focused on Dasset. If you're not aware, Dasset is New Zealand's platform for trading crypto assets, and we target uh, a number of customers. However, our, our core customer base are uh, professional traders and institutions. And uh, we have over 90 crypto assets in our platform. There are a few that we're listing over the next few weeks, which include uh, Proppy, which is a token related to a real estate. And another upcoming token is called ApeCoin. ApeCoin is the metaverse that is uh, managed by the Board Ape Yacht Club. There are a few entities uh, that trade crypto within New Zealand. Uh, um, several of them are not based in New Zealand and are located in these uh, places like Australia or Singapore. And uh, the benefit about uh, using Dasset is that we are uh, right here in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, we actually have uh, quite a bit of staff on the South Island now as well. And so you can come to our offices or uh, catch up with an account manager in person to go over uh, crypto. Uh, and because we're New Zealand based, we work with the regulators to make sure that we're following all the uh, rules and regulations and, and keeping up to date on the ever changing environment. Uh, in, in addition to that, we have a, a partnership with Bitrex and that partnership brings over uh, $1.5 billion in crypto liquidity to New Zealand, and that's uh, in US dollars. So it's closer to two and a half billion New Zealand dollars. Uh, since 2017, we've done $450 million in trade volume, and we expect to uh, hit a billion dollars in trade volume by next year. Uh, when you go on our platform, you'll find that we have chat support, which is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. We also have um, uh, email support. And uh, as soon as some of our support staff come back from holiday uh, in the next couple of weeks, we will also bring, be bringing on phone support, which you can't really say for a number of uh, international crypto trading platforms. Something that we've also started to introduce is our dedicated account managers. So if you haven't talked to your account manager yet, please let us know and, and we'll have them reach out to you. They're currently working on uh, reaching out to new customers and uh, setting up meetings with, with uh, some of our older customers. Um, and so uh, we're, we're pretty excited about uh, introducing this. And really this is, because we've started to focus a lot more on institutional clients and uh, high net worth clients. And so we're giving them a, uh, a customized white glove experience when getting into the crypto series. And, and particularly because the, the crypto space is so challenging to navigate if, if, you've, um, if you're not used to it yet. And one area that uh, isn't really targeted towards our retail customers, but is, is a product that we're really uh, focusing on, uh, especially with our institutional customers, are our API products. And our API products enable professional traders, institutional traders to uh, trade 24-7 uh, in an automated fashion and uh, give 
tools that you might not be able to have access to through uh, our front end. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. powered through the ability to have uh, API access, you can access advanced order types and uh, create uh, uh, trading strategies utilizing these advanced order types. And uh, uh, we're also quite proud of the way that we manage customer funds, uh, we, where we use uh, multi-signer technology, uh, a number of redundancies, and uh, we're not reliant on uh, New Zealand. Uh, sometimes you, you'll see things like uh, earthquakes happening in New Zealand, and we wanted to account for that. So we actually make sure to distribute uh, the access to customer funds to multiple countries, um, uh, including New Zealand and uh, outside New Zealand. This is a really important piece of um, work that we've done over the years to make sure that we have a safe trading environment for our customers. There's a stigma in the media that there, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, bad trading activity that happens in crypto. And through our data, we've shown uh, about 0.4% or less uh, of um, activity is related to uh, Alyssa activity. And for us, we're able to identify that and stop it. And uh, you can't really say that for other financial institutions that are managing other products. Uh, for example, things like cash. Um, it's, it's very difficult to identify how cash is being used for things like money laundering. But uh, we make sure to uh, uh, stay up to speed with the regulators and uh, uh, work with them in a number of different capacities to uh, make sure that we're following all the rules and that we're stopping the bad guys because we want our customers to have a really positive uh, trading experience. We don't really want you trading with uh, somebody who is doing wash trading or uh, trying to launder money. Uh, although that is a, a very, 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 very small amount, we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And so uh, being based in New Zealand, that gives us the opportunity to uh, make sure that we're up to speed and following all the rules so um, that customers have that safe environment. A big product that we've been building and, and focusing on over the last uh, six months to a year have been our APIs but we've been focusing on them primarily for institutional customers because we're starting to see a lot more demand and interest from these types of players. And those could be financial entities uh, like the Forsyth bars of the world, or they could be uh, platforms like payment gateways, uh, looking to offer the ability for clients in New Zealand to uh, accept crypto through uh, payment. And uh, the best way to do that is through DASET's APIs. And uh, within New Zealand, I think we have by far the best APIs uh, available for institutional clients. And uh, a feature that we launched um, maybe five months ago are uh, the ability for customers, particularly institutional customers, to create sub accounts through APIs. So if you have uh, five, 10,000 customers, you can create a sub account for each one of those customers so that they can have their own segregated account for depositing, withdrawing, buying, selling, trading crypto assets. And that isn't just a uh, um, uh, order type such as a market order we facilitate those advanced order types through our APIs. So this enables uh, high throughput trading and customers can place um, up to three, 400 trades per minute through our APIs. And something that we are looking at for our uh, more retail customers are how can you use the APIs through applications uh, such as uh, well-known third-party 
uh, trading bots, for example. And although we haven't developed any partnerships, those are some of the things that we're looking at so that uh, some of our retail customers may be able to utilize our APIs in the same way that professional traders or institutions do as well. So this is where I'm, I'm really excited to share some of the things that we're, we've been working on and that uh, you, you'll be seeing on our platform over the next uh, few months. I will say, if, if you look at uh, other platforms, you'll hear companies like Coinbase recently laid off 20% of their staff. Um, Robinhood recently uh, is, is laying off something like 30% of their staff. Uh, eToro, a number of these uh, trading platforms are cutting back because of uh, market uncertainty and the bear market. I'm really happy to say that uh, Dasset uh, has not been laying off any staff and we're in fact growing our staff and customer base. And uh, that is to help us support our new features that are coming up and focus on development that we're working on over the next two, three years. So uh, this product that you'll be able to utilize very soon is staking. So uh, you'll be able to uh, hold your crypto assets on Dasset and with two clicks of a button we're, we're making it as easy as possible, you'll be able to uh, stake your crypto asset and earn some rewards for, um, uh, for those assets. Now, staking has uh, a lot of different connotations and uh, has certain risks. And so what I wanted to go through are the types of staking that we will be doing and those risks so that customers understand what they are. And what uh, we will be looking at offering are what we consider very low risk initially. And um, before we look at anything that has to do with things like liquidity pools and uh, so, so we'll, we'll start by enabling customers to stake mainnet tokens and governance tokens. The rewards for the staking will be variable. It's uh, completely outside of our control and will depend on the network that we're staking on. It will depend on uh, other variables such as the inflation rate of that network the transaction volume on that network, because that means transaction fees, and how many other people are staking, or how many other, um, uh, how much of the supply is being staked. And uh, uh, a couple of examples. So the more transactions that are happening, the higher the fees, that means the, the higher uh, the rewards. Uh, same with inflation. If inflation is dropping, so uh, newly minted coins are less and less each year, then the rewards will get less and less uh, each year proportional to that inflation. And the other uh, aspect for how many people are staking, um, the more people that are staking, the that means that there's usually less rewards because those rewards are distributed uh, across those people staking. So network staking, that what does that mean? Uh, and this is looking at blockchains that, uh, or, or networks that use proof of stake to validate transactions on that network. So most of the time they are layer ones. They are, uh, they have their own blockchains, uh, which means that they're, uh, multi-billion dollar infrastructures or hundreds of millions of dollars in infrastructure. And uh, when, when you're staking, this is where, uh, for example, if you're staking Cardano, there is an inflation rate, uh, I don't know it off the top of my head, something like 2% a year. So by staking Cardano, you won't lose value from um, inflation. You'll be able to maintain the, uh, the newly minted coins that are created uh, on Cardano. And so the, um, uh, th this requires setting up infrastructure that 
uh, validates the transactions on those networks. So, uh, so some of the benefits that we're, we're looking at offering with network staking is the ability to unstake and redeem funds at any time. Uh, this is a little bit of a challenge and something that we're working through because some of these uh, tokens have lockup periods of three to four weeks. And so um, if you stake in a mainnet token and you request to unstake those tokens, the contract that they're locked in may not let uh, us uh, access those funds for three or four weeks. And that those are the mechanics or the rules that were uh, put into the, um, the software. And so working on how we can make that happen where customers can stake or unstake anytime with two clicks of a button and um, not have to worry about uh, the, um, the, the cool down period for some of these networks. Uh, the other area is uh, we do plan on offering uh, full insurance for uh, the staking of mainnet tokens. And that is because of the relative low risk. The rewards will vary. Uh, network staking rewards tend to be lower compared to uh, other types of staking or DeFi products. And that is uh, generally because the inflation rate is lower um, and also there's lower risk. So what are the risks for mainnet staking? Uh, so the, the risks do depend on the network. And uh, one of the reasons why is uh, a stipulation for staking on a blockchain network is that you have to have 24 seven uptime. So that means you need physical infrastructure servers that are holding the entire, or depending on the blockchain, uh, a fragment of the blockchain and you're validating the transactions on that network. So you must have a, a computer that's connected, plugged in, um, essentially a server that is connecting to all the other servers or computers on the network and validating those transactions. And so if the validator goes offline, if it no longer um, is, is accessible, then there may be certain um, punishment for, uh, for that. And that might be um, not getting the reward for that block, or it could be something like the uh, collateral being punished. Uh, or, or, and so um, this is where we're quite comfortable with taking on this risk because uh, we've been staking for the last five years. We've been online for 24 seven. We use uh, a number of third parties and redundancies so that we make sure that uh, the validators are online and uh, working smoothly. And so uh, although there is some risk with mainnet staking, it's quite low compared to some of the other types of staking out there. And then the second one that we're looking at are, is governance staking. So governance staking it relates generally to applications. So rather than having their own blockchain, these are uh, decentralized applications that run on a blockchain. And so an example of that would be something like SushiSwap. And so the uh, this is um, a smart contract as opposed to a physical infrastructure. So the state is slightly different in that we don't need to manage uh, large servers that are processing the tr uh, transactions and validating them. This um, means interacting with the smart contracts of the application to uh, gain rewards for different reasons. So those rewards may be newly minted tokens, they might be rewards for governance, or they might be uh, revenue being generated on those applications. And so the, um, the, the interesting thing here is that a, a lot of these tokens are being staked in um, low risk smart contracts. So they're smart contracts designed by the application. 
And they're not meant to provide liquidity. And so there are, are uh, and I'll go into those risks um, after this. But again, we're, we're also looking at ensuring the staking of these governance tokens. Uh, insurance is um, quite cheap compared to some of the other products because it's on the lower risk side of things. On the uh, redemption side, it's a lot easier to have instant redemption because most of these tokens allow people to uh, uh, stake and unstake almost immediately. So um, here are some of the risks. So um, it is a smart contract. And because the smart contract um, is, is software, there might always be some kind of risk there. And a great example that I like to give is uh, the heart bleed uh, bug that was found in the HTTPS uh, protocol. So when you go and visit a website, you, when you uh, visit a website and you see that HTTPS and a little lock on um, the website URL, then what that means is that the data between your computer and the website is encrypted. So technically, nobody else should be able to see what you are looking at or doing on that website. And that technology uh, software had been out for 20 years, and it took 20 years for somebody to find a vulnerability. And so um, this is where there's, uh, we can't say that the risk is zero. There's always a potential that in one, five, 10, 20 years from now, there is a, um, a, a vulnerability found. However, compared to something like taking a liquidity pool, it is much, much lower risk. And uh, one of the reasons why is no impermanent loss. So there's um, no risk in uh, the value of the assets appreciating and getting stuck with one asset and not the other. And the uh, there are also other risks of uh, third parties like oracles uh, and traders that can interact with those smart contracts and potentially manipulate them. We don't really see that for large platforms like uh, Uniswap and SushiSwap, but that is a risk. And so uh, this is where we're not really going to be touching that type of staking or offering that to clients um, for the time being. And so um, the other type of risk, and this is for application, uh, lending applications, and that's uh, uh, a lending application such as Aave. So when you stake Aave, you receive some of the revenue generated for people lending and borrowing. But at the same time, by staking, you are also taking risk. And that risk is if the Aave lending platform becomes under collateralized, the stakers can lose up to 30% of the collateral that they've staked to cover the losses um, or to make the um, under collateralized protocol whole. That's never happened. Uh, we've seen the CFI versus DeFi over the last few months where uh, all the crypto lending platforms platforms that were doing uh, very sketchy, high-risk things with customer funds were um, went bankrupt, where the DeFi lending platforms, they were operating uh, without issue, without hiccup, and uh, they've really shown how resilient they are and how much better they are as uh, products compared to those uh, centralized lending platforms. And so, um, we're, we're looking at ways to identify how we can offer something like staking Aave, where the risks are clearly defined. And uh, so it makes sense for both our customers and us. So those are uh, some of the risks that will be um, around staking, but we're pretty excited about offering this to our customers because this aligns with our goals to uh, have a lot more infrastructure 
particularly in DeFi or decentralized finance, and participate in the governance and ownership over these networks. So uh, this is a reward to our customers that visit our crypto journey because uh, this has been uh, a really secret project that we've been working on and uh, it's still three, four months away, but we're pretty excited about uh, releasing it to our customers. And what we're offering is a uh, membership, if you will, that it comes in NFT form. And so uh, before the NFT launches, there will be a number of a use cases and utility with the Dasset NFT. And this is our entry into the metaverse that we're building for over the next three, four years. And we're pretty excited to uh, give our customers the opportunity to participate. And the goal, one of the biggest goals of, of uh, this project is targeting people uh, or our customers that are not what they would call in crypto land, uh, degens. And so you, you find a lot of people who are crypto natives and they're trading a lot of pointless NFTs and um, using the NFTs, but we have a, a, a very large customer base of, of 50 and up. And they uh, are holding a lot of crypto assets, but they're not diving in, they're not utilizing crypto. And this gives us an opportunity to connect with some of our customer base and give them the opportunity to enter this space uh, through Dasset. And so it's, it's a way to help customers uh, learn about what's happening in um, the NFT space and participate. And so uh, some of the utility that we will be offering, and this is tentative. So uh, some of these things might be, uh, there might be additional, might be less, but I, I think we pretty much locked down that, that um, most of these things will uh, be coming out with our NFT. And so um, by holding a DASA NFT, you'll have a, a trading fee discount. So um, that's pretty amazing, especially for some of our uh, high throughput traders, uh, even some of our API traders uh, may be interested in holding in it one of the DASIT NFTs just so that they can get uh, a discount um, of, uh, when they trade. We're also offering uh, premium customer support 24 seven. It doesn't matter if you're trading 3 a.m., uh, you'll be able to uh, engage with support staff immediately to answer any questions and uh, through a couple of different mediums. And uh, you won't be able to access that uh, premium customer support unless you have that NFT. Uh, because we're coming out with staking, we're also going to offer uh, higher staking rewards to our customers that are holding the NFT. We're only going to have a, a, a limited number of NFTs. So uh, we don't have the full um, uh, quantity yet, uh, but it, it's going to be very, very limited uh, in terms of, of how many we'll be uh, releasing. And so, um, and that's so that we can provide the, the premium customer support. But uh, by holding the NFT, you also be able to have uh, higher rewards from staking on our platform. We're going to give some real world uh, uh, utility, such as a discounts to hardware wallets and other crypto merchandise. So, so we've partnered with a uh, um, crypto merchandise company that's providing tools so that uh, people can trade safer and more securely. And uh, you'll have uh, discounts to things like that. So uh, you don't have to store your crypto on a wallet on your computer or on your phone and worry about its security, for example. And then uh, last thing, and this is something else we're pretty excited on, uh, we'll be doing a crypto journey on this very soon. And that is Dasset's Metaverse office. And uh, we're, we're working on developing our office. We already have the land and we'll have a crypto journey in the Metaverse. You can come and hang out with us and um, do, we'll do a presentation. But 
the NFT, the data NFT, will give you special access to uh, some uh, parts of our offices um, in the, the world that we have our offices in. And this, uh, uh, so this is helping us move into the metaverse and uh, build that um, utility and the, the roads towards having uh, a, a fully immersive experience when you um, conduct your DeFi, decentralized finance. And so um, we're really excited about this. Uh, some of it is going to be R&D. So we don't expect every um, thing that we're working on to, especially with our NFT project, to uh, follow through. But we're going to see what sticks. And um, we're, we're pretty excited about the direction that it's going in. And so some of the other things that we're looking at and working on is uh, using your NFT as things like authentication. So you don't need to use an email and password to log into your Gasset account. You can sign a transaction and uh, use the NFT almost like uh, an identity or a form of authentication. Um, in addition to that, with other products like our staking, uh, our land in the metaverse, uh, we'll be able to create more customized experiences for our users that uh, want to trade or access uh, different decentralized financial products. And so those things will be um, things like insurance, things like uh, lending, things like, um, uh, 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 of course, transactions. And um, we're pretty excited to uh, share this with you and, and get you guys on board and, and down, this, uh, down this road with us. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, I won't share anything uh, else uh, because we do have a few other surprises, but you'll have to uh, keep checking back for more for them. Great. Do we have any questions from anyone? Thank you, Stephen. That was awesome. Exciting about the staking. That's oh, really, really great news. No questions. Okay. Okay. Any questions about um, uh, staking or NFTs? Ha happy to answer them, and uh, or DASET services in general. I know we've we've talked to a number of customers uh, about, about our staking recently, so I think a, a lot of people are aware that this is uh, coming up and. Uh, or aware of, of the direction that we're going in with, with the staking. Oh, we have questions. Uh, right, you've said already you have, we have land for the Metaverse office. Where is that going to be built? Ah, great question. So uh, we actually have uh, land in multiple metaverses, and uh, it's going to be in all three. So one is Decentraland. The second one is uh, Sand um, uh, or Sandbox, I believe it's called. And then the third one is TCG World. And they all are slightly different. And if you go into them, you'll, you'll find completely different experiences. And uh, the one, uh, for, for example, Decentraland, you can use via a browser. And uh, Decentraland, you have to download an app to access it. And uh, we've been waiting uh, for a couple of different uh, 
things before showing this to, to our customers. And uh, the one we're designing the office. And so the office uh, is, is something like 80, 90% designed. I think Pantelis is working on that uh, design. But uh, the other uh, one is, is we want to do a showcase in uh, TCG world because that one has some pretty incredible graphics and, and functionality. And so we've been waiting for us to be able to actually showcase that. Uh, uh, we've been talking about this for a long time and uh, we're getting really close a uh, few weeks away before we can do it uh, internally amongst the DASA staff, and then we'll be able to do it for everyone. So um, in terms of the concept of metaverse, I think it's kind of funny when somebody says a metaverse or our metaverse, where if you think about the metaverse, I, I think it's the metaverse. And so there will be these different worlds like Decentraland connecting with each other. And the immersive experiences between them will be the metaverse. And so we don't really know who the winners are. We're not trying to guess who the winners are. And we see this as a, a evolving uh, process. And th that's part of the journey. We're here to uh, be alongside our customers because we don't know the winners. Uh, there's no way that anybody has a crystal ball to identify who the winners are going to be in the future. And so uh, that's that's part of the fun and, and the excitement around crypto. Fabulous. John would like to know, can you work to price an API connection with CoinStats? Great question. I think this is uh, something that we'll definitely look into. And uh, yeah, we will uh, reach out to them and, and see what we can do this week. So um, we'll, uh, uh, we're, I know we're, right now we're, we're uh, in talks with CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko to plug in our APIs there. Uh, a big thing that was missing were uh, asset pages and we now have individual asset pages so um, which provides uh, content and information around each asset on our platform. And so um, well, we'll definitely look into coin stats and, and see how we can get plugged in there. So thanks for the suggestion, John. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Really appreciate uh, your, your time. And please, if you have any questions, any suggestions, we're always looking at ways that we can prove, improve our services. And uh, for us, it's a really exciting time. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be expanding our team quite a bit over the next uh, three to six months and focusing on a lot of new products and uh, growing our uh, API uh, customer base and targeting those uh, institutional and, and payment providers. Yeah, I think we're actually going to have a local player come on to uh, a crypto journey pretty soon. Um, uh, they are a subsidiary of Centrality, and they, they have a product uh, here in New Zealand, and their, their tokens actually trading on our platform. So uh, we'll, we'll have them talking uh, with us um, at a very uh, near future uh, crypto journey. And, and we're also bringing pro, uh, teams from crypto projects to come and talk about their projects. And that gives uh, New Zealand the ability to uh, interact with those teams directly. Uh, great for developers, great for institutions that want to understand what the heck some of these crypto assets are doing. Well, thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.